neural networks, a source of all fantasy. But what is it exactly? And is it so magical that it can replace human brains? In this video, we will try to cover how neural network works and what it can be used for using an intuitive visualization created with Godot Engine. If you want to learn Godot Engine, I made a series of tutorials teaching how to create a cool top-down shooter, so check it out. To understand how the brain works, scientists had first to understand how a neuron worked. We will do just the same here by trying to understand how the perception, that is the equivalent of a neuron, works. A perception has one or more entries. We call those synapses. To keep the example simple, let's take three entries and let's call our three inputs x1, x2 and x3. We can assign some values, so for example 0 0.4, 0 0.2 and 0 0.7. Then each synapse has a weight, so weight 1, 2 and 3. The output is the sum of each input multiplied by the corresponding weight. We can change the weight and so the output changes. Let's say for those inputs the output should be 0.45. We change the weight and boom, we have 0.45. Now let's move on to a full neural network. Yeah, I know, you might be a little bit disappointed right now. We only have two neurons and each has only two inputs. That's not a lot. Even though I'm not sure I have a lot more than this in my brain actually. <laughs> Let's consider our two inputs as a brain size and a feet size. And let's give a color to each output. So red for the first one and blue for the second one. Now let's say we want to differentiate dolphins and crocodiles. So we'll go on the terrain and get some values. There we have it. Um, dolphins are in red and crocodile in blue. So as you can see, dolphins have big brain, everyone knows that, and they have rather small feet. Uh, yeah, we'll say they have feet. <laughs> and crocodile have some small brains, but really big feet. So for each input, a brain size and a fit size, the neural network will give a red value and a blue value. If red is greater than blue, we will consider this input is a dolphin. And if blue is greater than red, we will consider it as a crocodile. For the moment, the neural network output is red, so a dolphin for each input. This is not really great, so let me change the weight. And as you can see in blue, our neural network gives a crocodile for those inputs. Now let's try to make the difference between dolphins and crocodiles. So I adjust the weight and here we are. As you can see, all the dolphins points are in the red era and all the crocodile points are in the blue era. So we can consider this as a success and our neural network is now able to make the difference between dolphins and crocodiles. So if we give a new input, a brain size and a feet size, but we don't know the animal, it will say if it's a dolphin or a crocodile. Let's now consider a new data set. We'll have shrimps in red with small feet, small brain, and elephant in blue with big feet, big brains. But you can see the line always go through zero, zero. So I cannot differentiate properly shrimps and elephants. This is due to the fact that when we set our input to zero and zero, the red output is equal to the blue output and they are both equal to zero. So that means we are on the edge of the blue era and the edge of the red era. That means the line will go through zero, zero. But this is not the end. We have a solution to this. We need to go back to our perception and add some biases. 
So we call our bias B and as you can see it is another parameter we can adjust to change the output. Back to our neural network, I can now change the biases of each perception. And by changing those, I can shift the separation line so it doesn't go through 0, 0 anymore. Now I can find the good parameters to differing shrimps and elephants. There we have it. Now let's try with a last example. Let's say we want to differentiate snails and dogs, for example. Even with the biases, we still have a straight line. So we cannot differentiate uh, the dogs and snails properly. The straight line is due to the linearity of our neural network. Every operation is linear here. So we need to add non-linearity. And to do this, we go back to the perception and we add what's called an activation function. We can use the sigmoid function, for example. So now the output of the perception is the sum of each entry multiplied by the weight plus the bias and all of this passed to the sigmoid function. Let's go back to our neural network. I can activate the sigmoid option but as you can see it doesn't change anything. The result is still linear. This is due to the fact the sigmoid is an increasing function. So if red is greater than blue, then sigmoid of red is greater than sigmoid of blue. So applying the sigmoid doesn't change anything in fact. What can we do about that? The trick is to add a hidden layer. So we will add more neurons between the input and the output. Let's add a layer with three neurons, for example. I'll keep the sigmoid off for the moment, so I can just show you uh, if our if we don't have the sigmoid, uh, basically we keep a linear neural network, so it doesn't bring anything new. Uh, as you can see, we still uh, pass by zero, and if I add some biases. Uh, we can move around like this. Uh, now let's activate the sigmoid. The main difference now is that we compose our sigmoid function, which means we are doing sigmoid of sigmoid of something. And here we can already see the neural network is not linear anymore because we have a little bit of curve. But let me show you if I change this weight, you can see we are absolutely not linear. We have a nice curve here. So now let's try to move the red um, uh, era around so it can define correctly our snails and dogs. Oh yes! Finally, after more than 40 minutes, I managed to do it. Whew. And I don't even take into consideration some rage quit I did, so... <laughs> I mean, that was really hard. But that's good, because it makes my next point. Optimizing a neural network by hand is almost impossible. And that's why we use algorithm. So here you can see the backpropagation algorithm in action. Of course, it does way better than me. If you're interested about this algorithm or any other subject linked with artificial intelligence, tell me in the comments. The source code of this project is available in the description. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. See you.